Muted. About. Um, the first piece of software we're going to talk about is InfraWorks. And InfraWorks comes in two flavors. There's InfraWorks 360 LT and InfraWorks 360. So the LT version is a subscription entitlement that comes with the infrastructure design suite premium and ultimate, and also the building design suite ultimate. InfraWorks 360 LT is essentially a preliminary design tool, 3D visualization tool. InfraWorks 360 doesn't come as a subscription entitlement. You have to purchase it outright. It comes as a desktop subscription. The differences between InfraWorks 360 LT and InfraWorks 360 are that InfraWorks 360 has three particular models, modules, pardon me. It has a roads module, a drainage module, and a bridge module. So with the roads module, you can do roundabout design. So the majority of the tasks we're going to do today involve InfraWorks 360. Because you need the roads module, you need the 360 package. The LT package that comes with your suite uh, will not be able to do roundabouts. Um, there is a product comparison web page out there that will give you um, all the details about what's different between the two products. And here it is right here. InfoWorks 360 is on the left, InfoWorks 360 LT is on the right. So feel free to browse to this uh, website when you have some uh, moments. Civil 3D, of course. I would imagine uh, most of you are familiar with Civil 3D. It is Autodesk's flagship civil design package. You can buy it on its own, or it comes with the infrastructure design suite premium or ultimate. Vehicle tracking. It's, it's not just for vehicle tracking per se. So most people think about vehicle tracking as I'm going to select a vehicle, I'll give it, let's say, a center line, and let's see where the extents of this vehicle are so I can plan my road. And vehicle, Autodesk vehicle tracking will do that, of course. But it has other features as well. So sweat path analysis, it does. It has a parking module. You can lay out an entire parking structure. Uh, and then, of course, the roundabouts. Interestingly, of course, vehicle tracking will install on AutoCAD or AutoCAD products, like Civil 3D. But if you're a MicroStation user, it also installs there as well. So let's talk about the roundabout workflow we're going to discuss today. First, we're going to start a model in InfraWorks, do a preliminary design uh, using its own roundabout tool. We're going to take that preliminary design, move it into AutoCAD, and we're going to do a two-dimensional design using Autodesk vehicle tracking tools. We're essentially going to stay in AutoCAD, except we're now going to use the Civil 3D. While we're still using the vehicle tracking tools, we can create Civil 3D objects using the vehicle tracking tools. We'll make a full-on corridor using vehicle tracking. Once we've completed our detailed design in Civil 3D using vehicle tracking, we can take that model back out into InfoWorks um, for further visualization. So InfraWorks. Now, before we jump into the demonstration, uh, I'm going to run a little poll here first just to see where everybody's at with regards to InfraWorks. So I'll launch the poll right now, and I'll give you about 20 seconds to answer.
and I'll share the poll results afterwards. It looks like we've got 90% of the attendees have voted already. Thank you. So I'll give you a few more seconds and I'll close the poll. Okay, I'm going to close the poll. It looks like 97% of you voted. That's very good. I wonder if we'll get that kind of turnout next week. We'll see, right? So I'll close the poll. Oh, 100%. Everybody voted. Thank you very much. We'll close the poll and I'll share the results. All right, so as you can see, um, most people have never used it. Um, a quarter have experienced it a little bit. 10% or so have used it on a few projects, and there are a couple of you that use it often. So very good. That gives me a good cross-section of its current use. Thank you very much. All right, so I will go and start up InfoWorks. Here we are. So, to reiterate, InfoWorks at its core is, is a preliminary design tool, visualization tool, analysis tool, and, and of course we're talking the 360 version of InfoWorks. So you probably don't recognize this. Um, we're looking north up 232 Street in Langley and the cross street at 64th Avenue, in case you're wondering. Um, there's actually already a roundabout at this intersection, but the big map uh, hasn't been updated yet, so we don't see that roundabout. Um, before you start an InfoWorks model, there's actually one thing that you can do. I'll go to my, my start page here at the InfoWorks. There's something called the Model Builder. Now, I'm not going to create a model but I'll open the model builder so that you can see how it's done. So what kind of data do we need for a model? Well, typically we need a three-dimensional surface, a terrain model, like you would with Civil 3D. You'll want orthophotos. You'll want existing roads. You'll want um, buildings if there are any available. So this, you can get your own data yourself. Or you can use this model builder which is built into InfoWorks 360 to generate a model for you based on um, available sources. So I can zoom into the area that I want or I can type a location. I can choose a rectangular area, um, polygonal area. I can even import uh, a shape file with a polygon that I've previously defined and use that as a boundary for for what I need. So I can give the model a name. I can choose which, which of my InfraWorks groups I'd like it to populate within. And then I'll, cre I'll click the Create Model button. And it will work in the cloud. It'll upload whatever it needs to to my account in the cloud. And when it's finished creating the model, I'll get an email that says, hey, your model's ready. Please go to InfraWorks and open it up. Um, depending on the size of your model, it might just take a couple minutes, but so far, even on fairly large models, um, it's never taken more than 15 minutes for me to generate a model, even of, of large size. Um, currently, if you can see that here on the screen on the right, the maximum is 200 square kilometers to generate this free model based on online resources. Um, that used to be smaller, so that tells me that Autodesk is working on you know, making larger models available. Who, who knows where that's going to go in the future? It could be larger. So you can start from nothing is my point. You can go from nothing and you can have a model such as this with the 3D model, existing roads, and ortho photo. So I'm going to quickly sketch out some roads here. It's just going to be a basic um, local road. And I will use this is the style. I'll zoom out a little bit more. 
I'll start here in the south and I'll finish up here in the north. Now this is a really, really basic road. You can do any number of interesting roads within InfoWorks. You can make it a highway. You can make it a collector road. You can make it a local road. You can choose from multiple styles, how many lanes. You can choose curves. You can choose spirals. All right, so I'll make another road. I'll use the same style. And I'll start over here in the west. And I'll just double click a spot here in the east. Okay, there's two roads. I actually have another road over here, which I created during experimentation. I'll just get rid of that road. When you have two design roads that intersect, you get an automated intersection, which is already fantastic. But it's not a roundabout. But watch my cursor. As I hover over the different parts of the road, they highlight. But then I hover over the intersection, it highlights as well. When I select it, I get this little dialog right here. And I can choose edit mode, you know, lane markings, um, or geometry. Right? When I pick geometry, I can do a couple of things. First, I'll, I'll check out the bottom here. I can choose the design vehicle that I'm designing for this particular intersection. So if I pick a bigger truck, my intersection becomes bigger with larger radii. If I pick a smaller car, the radii are also changed. But then right here in the middle, I have the choice currently of two different types of intersections, a typical intersection or a roundabout. So I'll pick roundabout. And instantly I get, well, what? Definitely looks like a roundabout. You might be saying, okay, well, how does it know what information to use? Well, part of the roundabout asset card, that's what this is right here, it's the asset card, is I can choose a different kind of standard. So right now, the interface is such that you have to hover over these guys so that you can see the pop-out and it'll show you which standard it is. There's several standards to choose from. I'm going to pick this one, urban single lane roundabout. Okay, it didn't change too much. Well, you know what? Let's pick a different one. Double lane spiral marking. All right, so it's much larger, much bigger radius. We've got some different lane markings. So essentially, you tell the software to create a roundabout but, and you pick the standard, and you get a usable roundabout. Now, this particular roundabout has some editing capabilities. I can change the length of these approaches if I need to. Hard to imagine in the future that we won't get, you know, more editing capability, but roundabouts are pretty new inside InfoWorks at this time. And so for now, essentially, my you know, preliminary design of my roundabout is finished. I can create some bookmarks. I can create a, a video fly-through if I want. For example, I'll just do a, a quick storyboard. Uh, storyboard in InfoWorks essentially is, is another word for um, quick video, essentially. Um, I'm going to choose the one I've created called Orbit. Now, hopefully, the video comes across reasonably smoothly in this webinar. Um, I'm not going to hold my breath. Sometimes video and, and the webinars don't come up that well, but I'll let it sit here so you can see the end of it a little bit. All right, so that's called a storyboard, a little video inside the report. All right, so I save the file. My next goal here is, is to get my model, get everything into Civil 3D at this point. So I'll start up Civil 3D. You know, I can create a new drawing hub. I've got one here already. 
Um, it takes a little while to actually create the model, so I'm not going to bore you and, and make you watch that. But I'll go through what it takes. So in, in Simple 3D's insert ribbon tab, we have the insert InfraWorks 360 model. <laughs> and here's the interface. Now, I'm not actually going to pick the model because in order to import it successfully, I actually have to close down the model. But here's the interface. Up at the top, I choose the InfraWorks 360 model. I just browse to wherever it's stored on my folder system. A couple of things have to happen. Your simple 3D drawing has to have a coordinate system set. And of course, so does the 360 model. Not just lat long, the infrared 360 is typically starts with lat long, but you actually have to set a working coordinate system as well. So those two things must happen before you can transfer data between InfraWorks and Civil 3D. There's something here called object settings. And what that is is I can essentially predefine what type of information I want to bring in from an InfraWorks model. It could be existing roads, it could be design roads, it could be underground utilities. Sometimes maybe all I want is design road, or all I want is terrain surfaces, for example. So I'll hit cancel in here for now. But essentially, what I end up with after the import from InfraWorks is the existing ground surface that InfraWorks created. Um, any roads that I've created myself or that InfraWorks created itself by using the model builder. Now I didn't want to do that because it brings in, well, quite frankly, an enormous number of roads for the area that I've chosen. I don't need those. Um, InfraWorks as well will allow you to design your road profiles and those too come through when you import data from InfraWorks. You'll notice that the roundabout does not come in, at least not yet. I have not heard of any plans, but right now the roundabout does not come in. So, but its alignments do, its central line alignments do. And that's what we need vehicle tracking for. So I'm going to open up my vehicle tracking ribbon. Right, on the left here are swept path tools, then there's the parking tools, and then there's the junction tools or roundabout tools. So I can go into the Standard Explorer and choose the roundabout standard I want. There are quite a few to choose from. There's Austrian, Brazilian, British, Czech, Danish, um, a bunch from US. Interestingly, I cannot see any Canadian ones yet anyways. So here we are. We now have to choose which standard we want, uh, or I can just close this and just pick a new, new roundabout, because I can choose that standard later if I want. All right, so I'll choose um, one drawing unit equals one meter. That's civil 3D's typical thing. Junction one, I can name it anything I want, put a description, put some notes. I can choose the coloring scheme. And then I can choose the surfaces. So right now, I only have one existing ground surface in the drawing. That's the one that came in from InfraWorks. Um, this isn't really important to me yet because I'm currently just a 2D design. Which reminds me, I need to pop this back up. We've done this guy. Um, vehicle tracking, there we go. Um, let's flip back to Civil 3D. There we are. I'll create the roundabout. I'm choosing the location of the center, I, it doesn't have to be at the intersection. I can move it anywhere around here I like. But again, I can make all these changes later. So it puts the center in for me. Next thing it asks is where are your access roads? So I'll pick my, in this case, civil 3D alignment, but it doesn't have to be an alignment. You can have a line, a polyline. But because I'm ultimately going to make a corridor from this, 
I need this to be an alignment. So I'll pick that alignment. That's the name that vehicle tracking is going to give this particular leg. Leg 1, 64 Avenue, because 64 Avenue is the name of that alignment. Right? Not such a useful roundabout yet. It's because I have to pick each leg separately. There's three legs, finally four legs. And the roundabout is essentially finished, at least in terms of an initial design. Now, oops, apparently. AutoCAD and Civil 3D have the use of Bing Maps. So you can use the GeoMap command uh, just to simply orient yourself with an overlaid aerial photo. All right, so I've imported the InfraWorks data. I've created the roundabout, and now it's time to edit. So I can edit the legs, the locations. I can edit roundabout settings. I'll edit vehicles. I'll add a sweat path. Uh, here we go. So there's my roundabout. Well, what kind of edits can I do? Well, let's try one here. I'll take my alignment and adjust it a little bit. So I move that PI to the north a hair. You'll see that the roundabout is significantly adjusted. Um, you'll also see that it's modeling a corridor. You may not have noticed that, but it's already doing the corridor. You know what? Every time I make a change, the corridor is going to rebuild itself. You know what? I, I don't really want that right now. Because I want, in my preliminary design, I want this to be the fastest I can. So I'm going to edit my corridor settings. I'll turn off the corridor, essentially. And I can make my two-dimensional edits really, really quickly without waiting for the corridor to rebuild itself. All right. There you go. I'll move this back down here. See, much faster. Um, I can move the whole roundabout by using this grip right in the center. You'll see there are a number of grips everywhere. If you hover on them, It'll tell you what it does. So that one adjusts the roundabout center point. This one adjusts the center line offset. You'll notice there's also signage as well. I can adjust the signage. They're like blocks. I can move this. I can rotate it. There's the yield sign. This one is roundabout sign. And these come in as a result of the standard that you chose. All right, what we're looking at here is, is paint, essentially. Uh, there is no splitter island here. Of course, there's a little island here. But right now, there's no splitter island, and I can add one later. We have a heads-up display for each leg. In this case, it says the fastest line entry speed is too large. That one is as well. That one's kind of yellow. It's almost too large. As you move this round all around, as you adjust lane widths, these values update themselves uh, completely dynamically. All right, what else can we change about this roundabout in the, in the edit tools here? Well, in general, there's a name. There's the color. Here are those surfaces we talked about earlier. And here's the, the standard. If I want to choose a different standard, I can pick a different one from the list, and my roundabout will be sufficiently modified. Some preferences. There's a round, oh, the big round guy in the middle. Right now there's one type. I can choose the diameter of the central island. I can choose crown lines. I can choose levels and grades. I can make this like a 2% slope from north to south, for example. For every leg, I have an entry in here as well. There's the direction, there's the leg name. I have choices on approach. What's the design speed? What's the gap? What's the lane width? For entry, exit. I also have levels and grades here as well. Split around it. Do I want an island where the lanes split? You know, I can do this a different way, and I'll show that a little bit later as well. Crosswalk, rumble strips, speed stripes, and then visual analysis. 
for every leg I get those those uh, options. Sweat path analysis. So in addition to the standards that you choose, you can choose a different kind of vehicle as well. So if you have only a, a tiny passenger car that's going to go through here, you're going to get a different looking roundabout than if you choose you know, a B-train tractor trailer. And then finally, here's my corridor. I don't need to build that yet. So let's move this back to the center. And let's work on this guy a little bit, our leg one approach. So up in the ribbon, we have some choices. I can create a new road. I can create a new splitter island, a new crosswalk. Well, let's do the crosswalk. You put this wherever I like. And I don't actually have to specify which approach. Wherever my cursor happens to be, that's the approach where it's going to put the crosswalk. So I'll put one right here. That's kind of a good spot for it. Hit enter. We have some more grips. I can change the width of my crosswalk if I need to. I can change the radius of this approach lane if I need to. But right now there's no splitter island. This is just paint right now. So you know I actually want an island right here. So again, I'll pick the roundabout and I'll choose the new splitter island tool. There it is, there's a plus, it's going to add it right there. There's my splitter island. So the software decided what radii to use, um, but then I can make changes all I want. If you're a grip fan, vehicle tracking is for you. There are so many grips here. If you like working with grips, uh, you're going to be happy. All right, so I've placed um, the endpoints arbitrarily. You can go into the settings and actually fix those points in um, exactly yourself. So we have this splitter island, but when we have a crosswalk, but currently, the splitter island kind of doesn't allow for a refuge, or it doesn't allow for a wheelchair ramp, let's say. So I can edit my roundabout again. And that's leg one. And that has to do with the crosswalk. So right down here at the bottom is the island crossing type. What kind of island is it? Is it a refuge? Is it you know, none like it was before? Is it projected? I'm going to choose bridged. Right, so now we can accommodate wheelchairs with this particular leg. I have to do the same for all four legs. Right? There's no islands here. I'll have to create an island. I'll have to adjust the crosswalk as well. To make all the changes you need in two dimensions first, because it's quick that way. And then when you're ready, go to 3D. But one more thing before I show you some 3D work here is the sweat path. Okay. Um, vehicle tracking, in a lot of people's minds, is, is about sweat path. And here's what I mean by sweat path. Here's a vehicle, and I can choose, you know, any number of points along that vehicle's path, and it gives me the, the outermost edge of that vehicle. But just to be certain, you know, I want to see if that vehicle fits through my roundabout. Now, if you've ever used auto turn or vehicle tracking before, you might think, well, it might be kind of difficult. I've got to enter lots of points for that vehicle to get through here, but not so much. It's all vehicle tracking and it's all dynamic. Watch this vehicle as I move it close to my roundabout. Did you see it snap? Okay, so it snaps. The software's smart enough to know, hey, there's a roundabout here. You must want me to drive inside the roundabout. Absolutely, I do. So I click the start point. 
And it doesn't matter where my cursor goes, as long as it's inside the roundabout somewhere, that vehicle will actually follow the roundabout geometry, which is fantastic. So I'll just make the bus drive right up here. And there's our bus swept path, and it follows the roundabout perfectly. And as you can see, it fits very nicely right inside everything. I'm pleased with my swept path design. So on to three dimensions. Back to my PowerPoint, here we go. So three dimensions. We're actually not going to create a new drawing here. It's going to be the same drawing, but it's three-dimensional roundabout design. So vehicle tracking is going to create our corridor for us. When we edit the roundabout legs, the corridor automatically gets rebuilt. Once we're satisfied, we can create a design surface, a final surface. So just before we do that, I'm going to do one more poll, please. It asks you how you're currently using vehicle tracking, if at all. So please take another 30 seconds to answer these questions. About half, half of you so far have never used it. Some experience for a quarter. Another quarter has uh, used vehicle tracking, but no roundabouts. And there are 10% sorry, who use it currently for roundabouts. So we have 82 people, uh, sorry, 82% of the attendees have voted so far. I'll give you another few seconds to allow the other 18% if you want to answer the poll. All right, five more seconds. Three, two, one. Okay, poll is closed. I'll share the results with you. All right, so 48% never used vehicle tracking. So this is your first foray into it. 19% have some experience. 23% um, use the tracking features, but no roundabouts. And 10% uh, are used for roundabouts. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right, let's go back to Civil 3D. So far, I've just been doing a two-dimensional roundabout, and it's time to make the corridor. So we'll edit the roundabout settings, go to the corridor section, and I just need, really, I just need to turn on one button to create alignments, because everything else automatically turns itself on, creates profiles, creates corridors, it uses a simple road assembly. Um, you can feel free to adjust the road assemblies after, because the one that happens out of the box may not match exactly what you need. So you can you're you're free to adjust the assemblies afterwards. So I'll say rebuild now. The corridor will be created and built. Hit the close button, and there's our corridor superimposed on top of the two-dimensional roundabout design. So let's take a look at our corridor in three dimensions. Now, if you're familiar with that part of Langley, you'll know that it's a pretty flat area. There's not a lot going on here in terms of differences in grade, but there's our corridor. You know what? At the very least, Using this vehicle tracking tool is a really good teaching tool for to show you how to create a roundabout corridor. You know, there's lots of different regions, lots of baselines. 
So it's a great way to learn how to make a corridor into your roundabout as well. Of course, if you have vehicle tracking, it does it for you, and it's a dynamic relationship. Now, as I said earlier, any change you make to your alignment, to your profile, will result in that corridor being rebuilt. So the two-dimensional stuff happens, then the three-dimensional corridor happens as well. I'll just wait for the corridor to finish rebuilding. There we are. So I made a small adjustment to my alignment. As you can see, the roundabout is significantly changed. As well, my swept path analysis, my bus, has also been adjusted as well. So make all the changes you need here. And when you're ready, when your corridor is finished, you have, let's say, a top surface, you're almost ready to bring it into Infor. There's one more little change that I can make to the roundabout. Um, I don't have to make this change before I bring it to Infor, but there's one interesting thing we can do. So right here in the general tab, right at the bottom under surface, the existing surface is this. The final surface is that. Well, if I go ahead and make a finished ground surface for my corridor, I can do an inter interesting thing. Bear with me for just a moment. There I go. I'll make a top surface. I'll say, give me the corridor extent as the boundary. All right, so I now have a top surface created, and I can show you that as well in the object viewer. There it is. All right, so what's this trick I can do in your forwards? Sorry, in vehicle tracking. Well, in the general tab, I can specify that the surface I just made, the top surface, I can configure that as the final surface, and then I can project the plan onto the final surface. What that means is all of our paint lines, all of our signs, everything gets essentially draped on that top surface so that when I view it, in 3D or view it using vehicle tracking's own animate tools, it's all in three dimensions. Okay, so let me see this drawing. So I'm essentially ready to bring it into InfoWorks because my detailed design is finished. I, I just want to use it now for visualization. I don't need to export anything. I can just go to InfoWorks and go to the data sources panel. And I can import the civil 3D drawing. So what's going to come in? Well, any surface in there that I want, any alignments, any profiles, and any corridors. Corridors come in in an interesting way. They come in as coverages in InfoWorks. If you're familiar with, with the coverage, that's how they come in, using a corridor. Um, you're probably familiar with corridors code set styles. Okay, so this corridor is using a code set style called BASIC. Now, let's take a look at that briefly. So here's the definition of my BASIC code set style. You'll see that there's names for pavement, base, sub-base datum, etc. There are no random materials applied. Okay, so I cannot use this as a base for my InfoWorks import because InfoWorks takes these corridor materials and defines them in the InfoWorks model as coverages using its own materials. Okay, if that doesn't make sense, I'll do this another way. I'm going to choose a different code set style. This one has all the materials defined already. Well, not all of them, but several of them. The pavement is defined as paving surface asphalt. The sub-base is gravel. If I had a boulevard, it would maybe be gravel. If I had daylight, it would probably be grass. All right, so 
in order to get the corridor into your InfraWorks model, you must employ a code set style that has the render materials applied. If you do not, you will not be bringing corridors into InfraWorks. So that's the kind of, I'm not going to say gotcha, but that's the prerequisite for bringing this corridor, or any corridor for that matter, into InfraWorks. Right, so again, it takes a little bit of time to do this. I'll show you the, the basic tool here. I, I pick the 3D design. I pick the drawing that contains it. I'll hit open, and it comes in. All right, so I've already done this uh, with this drawing as another proposal. So I'm going to switch proposal on here. Just take a moment to switch. Now you'll notice the, the, the roundabout design is significantly different than what you just saw. This is, I was just doing some experimentation, no problem. So let's look at the back of the data sources panel. So here's what comes in when you bring in your civil 3D design. So that comes in, it's a terrain, it's the top surface. Then the coverage areas come in, that's the drawing that's the corridor that came in from my design drawing. So what happens is the terrain, the top surface comes in first. The coverage areas come in second, and they're draped over the terrain model. And then you get what looks like a pretty good, albeit not correct, but a pretty good model of your, your roundabout. In this case, I have asphalt roads, I have a gravel shoulder, and I have some grass here as well. Now, you saw the storyboard I created earlier, the little video I made. So I can just choose the orbit, and I'll just play it again. Because storyboards are not unique to different proposals. If you're wondering what a proposal is, it's options. Option one, option two, it's like a different starting point. I can start from scratch, go through option one. I can start from scratch again, go through option two. That's essentially what different proposals are. So there's a storyboard I created. And that's some visualization. I, if I wanted to, I could save that as a movie and send it off to somebody. At this point, I'm sort of finished inside InfraWorks with my visualization model. Um, I could do more. I could import those 3D paint lines that we saw inside AutoCAD. I could import the signs. I could import trees and make this look really, really nice. I haven't spent enough time on this to make it uh, you know, an award-winning presentation, but it's still pretty good. Now, the last thing you might consider doing within InfraWorks is creating what's called a scenario and web views. So what we're looking at here, of course, the image on the top right is my roundabout inside InfraWorks. On the bottom left, that's not actually the InfraWorks homepage. This is the page that I've shared externally. So what happens is you, you need to synchronize your model to the cloud, number one. Number two, you have to create the scenario. And what a scenario is, is a, a defined region of your model. Okay, so let me go to my scenario browser. I'll zoom way out here. I have one scenario created. There it is. I can edit my scenario. So what, what is the scenario? The scenario is a piece of your model. You can kind of see it here. There, it's rounded in blue. A scenario is a piece of your model that you've defined. This is the area I want to share with external stakeholders. You define the area. You define the access right to that area. Is it public? Is it read-only? What do, what do how do you want to treat this? It gets published to the web by the cloud. And you'll get, ultimately, a web link that you can share with your stakeholders. And that link will allow them to view your model 
in a couple of different ways. So here are two different interfaces. Here's one interface which <coughs> excuse me, allows me to zoom in. There we are. It allows me to view those storyboards right here online if I want. So every storyboard you create will be shared online if you wish it. And your stakeholders or your customers or whoever it is that gets your link does not need to have InfoWorks installed to be able to view these. Now the other interface we have is this one. This is kind of the newest interface for this particular feature. We have a couple of buttons here. The red ones, pink ones, whatever color you want to call it, are bookmarks. Okay, inside InfoWorks I can save named views. I can zoom to an area, I can save it as a name. And that's what I've done here. But when you publish it as a scenario, these bookmarks get shared and they're called panoramas on the web. So when I click on that panorama, it looks just like a simple image. However, I can pan up, pan down, pan sideways, so it's not just a still image. Any bookmark that you save comes in to this interface as a panorama. This one was created essentially looking straight down from the model. Um, you'll notice there's no roundabout here. Um, I created this scenario before I actually created the roundabout. But no problem. If I make a change to the roundabout, I can just synchronize it again to the cloud and that roundabout will come right in. And that's essentially the workflow. Starts in InfoWorks, moves into AutoCAD with your 2D roundabout design using Autodesk vehicle tracking. You can add the corridor to the vehicle tracking. Finish up your detailed design in Civil 3D. Bring it back into InfoWorks, do your nice visualization, add some trees, add some videos, and then finally share it in the cloud, share it with your stakeholders. And that's essentially it for this particular webinar. Hung, if you want to uh, unmute yourself. I see there's, uh, there's been some questions there. Um, We'll have a look through them, and maybe we can share some of them. So first question, is the Autodesk Cloud required to receive a model, or can it be received without subscribing to the cloud? Um, in order to use InfoWorks 360, you must have a, an account with Autodesk, because InfoWorks 360 is what's called the desktop subscription, which is essentially managed by the cloud. You don't run it in the cloud, but it's managed in the cloud. So in order to use 360, you have to have a, an account. Thus, um, you're essentially subscribing to the cloud in that case. Number two, when will Canadian standards be added? It's, it's a pretty significant factor uh, to be adopted up here. Absolutely it is. I have no crystal ball. I wish I could answer that question for you, Andrew. But I do not know when or if Canadian standards will be added. I really hope this is going to happen soon. Um, I suppose what you can do is you can pick one that's very, very close, and you can make a copy of that standard, and you can call it, this is my Canadian standard. And you can save it on your hard drive, and you can share it with people. So right now, that's about as close as we can get. Next, how comprehensive is InfoWorks model information? Vancouver Metropolitan is fine, but what about Eastern Van Isle, Northern BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan? Um, this question is from Sean. Um, you know what, Sean? It, it kind of, I, I don't want to sound like I'm making light of it, but it kind of is what it is. It's, in, in the U.S., that's where all this kind of started. Um, most of the U.S. is fairly well detailed in, in the model builder. 
Um, in Canada, the, the southern portion of the country is is pretty detailed, like Vancouver, um, Toronto, the major metropolitan areas, and most of the southern Canada is pretty well detailed, not all of it. Um, but it's changing all the time. You know, six months from now, it's probably going to be more detailed, different parts of the country. All right, next question. The vehicle tracking ribbon, ribbon is excellent, but when Civil 3D already has intersections, roundabout tools, etc., why is this part of a separate add-on product and not a natural part of the software? Are these meant to replace Sorry. Are these meant to replace the functionality of the intersections roundabout tool? So you're right. Civil 3D has its own roundabout tool, but you know what? It's, it's only a two-dimensional tool. Uh, you would essentially need to create your corridor yourself. So I can't answer the question about you know, why it's not part of the software or if it's going to be in the future. Um, is it, is it going to replace the Civil 3D roundabout tool? Well, if, if I'm a designer and I have access to vehicle tracking, there would be no reason to use the internal Civil 3D roundabout tool simply because the vehicle tracking one is, is far more advanced. It has, it has far more power. It's a three-dimensional thing. So um, whether or not it's going to be part of the software in the future, I can't answer that question. Uh, lastly, did you have to set up those code set styles complete with render materials? Or are the render materials included with the program? So the one that I showed, Sean, the code set style that I called um, all codes. I'll grab it here. One sec. Edit code set style. Oh, actually, there it is. Um, these code set styles come with the software. If you start a new drawing using out of the box Civil 3D metric NCS template, you get all these things. So all codes attaching, uh, codes with labels, all codes, they're all there. Um, as you add different pieces to your corridor, like sidewalks or daylight, those just, if you use this particular code set style, they will get populated with the appropriate random materials, which then go right into InfraWorks. Um, but you definitely have to be careful. Uh, for me, I like working with the basic code set style because I can look at that corridor in 3D and it's fast. But the moment I switch to all codes, it's a little bit slow. So for me, I have to remember to change this to all codes, save the drawing, and then do the import into InfraWorks. And I do that just for performance. Um, day to day, I actually have another one that shows only the top of the corridor. That's the one I use day to day. But when I have to import to InfraWorks, I need to remember to switch to all codes. So I hope I did a good job of answering all those questions. Thanks, everybody, for uh, showing up. And, and I hope you learned a lot from this particular webinar. Um, we should be uploading it, assuming I did everything correctly. We should be uploading it to our Kansas YouTube channel in the next day or two. Um, and so you can view it there as well. But for now, my name is Matt Colbert. Thanks go out to Hung Nguyen for helping us out as well. Thanks, everybody. I hope you have a good rest of your week. And it's Matt Goldberg signing off.